As promised to each of us in Deuteronomy 31.8, the Lord himself goes before you and be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all on this beautiful day the Lord has made both to those of you here in person and to those joining us online. We especially welcome all visitors. Note that there are tags for visitors in the pews. Please share with us your name and contact information and put the removable tab on so that we may welcome you personally. We welcome all to join us for coffee and goodies after the service in Founders Hall which is down the long hall at the back of the sanctuary. And on the way, be sure to stop and purchase cookies from the Girl Scouts from Troop 3615, who hold their meetings here at Countryside Church. In addition, we have Countryside shirts for sale in the same hallway. They are on sale. This is the last day, and all money will need to be in by next week. Additionally, please all sign the friendship pad located at the ends of the pews.
Let us read responsively the call to worship. Remember the story of our faith. Rejoice in the hope of our faith. Cling to the promise of our faith. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and God who is just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in that, I invite you to now join with me in today's prayer of confession. Let us pray. As Lent unfolds before us, great God, and we see how far we have to go to Jerusalem. The road is long, our sins are many, and our burdens are heavy. We can't imagine new life, Easter life, as our current lives are filled with bad choices, failed efforts. Meet us in our weakness. Take up our sins, ease our burdens, carry us on the way. Bring us to Jerusalem at last. Show us a love that is stronger than death, a love no tomb can hold. All who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Trust the promises of God. Believe in Christ Jesus with your whole heart. Confess what the Spirit has done for you, and you will abide in life everlasting. Know that you are forgiven, and be at peace.
On this first Sunday in Lent, we turn to Deuteronomy, the 26th chapter, the first 11 verses. When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you as, as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in office at that time and say to him, today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm with a terrifying display of power and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. I grew up uh, in East Tennessee, as many of you know. My paternal grandparents lived just a little bit down the road from where we lived in town in a little place called Rockford, Tennessee. Granddaddy and grandmother had a farm where I spent quite a bit of time. My dad kept his walking horse there. I remember in the summer when we would work in the garden together and when the time was there for us to either finish or take a break. My granddaddy and my daddy and I would all sit under a big shade tree. And as a child, I heard stories from my granddaddy and my daddy. And I didn't realize at the time just how much they would come to mean to me. Many of you know I tell you about going to visit with my oldest friend, Mark Payne, who lives in Alabama. He and I have been friends since the fourth grade. And every January, we go from his home to Pittsview, Alabama, to deer hunt. And it is as far in the middle of nowhere as you imagine. But it is a wonderful place to get away, to at night look up at the stars again and realize that God really is, perhaps, we hope, in control. Mark and I found that um, we share something in common. His dad and my dad were great storytellers. And we recount some of them because some of them were told so often that I heard Mark's dad and he heard mine. But what we have come to realize between us is that we would give anything, anything, if our dads were still alive and we could hear one of those stories just one more time. This is a sermon 
that has a story. I can't imagine listening to a sermon that didn't have at least one story in it. I think that would be very boring. I was taught that a sermon wasn't to be a lecture. It was supposed to be more than a lecture. In homiletics class, that's a fancy word for a class to teach you how to preach. My professor said this, stories bring words alive. Isaac Dennison said, to be a person is to have a story to tell. I want to read just a couple of short paragraphs to you. This is from a communication specialist, Peg Newhauser, who says this, storytelling is the single most powerful form of human communication. It is the primary tool that human beings use to pass on their cultures. We can use it to inspire, teach, comfort, and entertain, or we can use it to destroy, stir up hate, and demoralize. Now hold on to your seats. Here's what she says next. Jesus and Adolf Hitler were both great storytellers. It is in our hands to decide how we will use this powerful tool. Jesus Christ and Adolf Hitler used them in completely different ways. Charles Dickens is reported to have said that good storytelling should make you laugh, make you cry, and make you worry. Now the Hebrews, the Israelites, were excellent storytellers. As you may know, that's how the Bible started to be transmitted verbally from one generation to another, telling the stories over and over again. The Jewish people are still great storytellers. Some of our greatest comedians, some of the best writers of television, some of the most excellent novelists have been Jews. Did you know that White Christmas was actually written by two Jewish fellows in Palm Springs? <laughs> Much of the Bible is stories. We often focus on Jesus stories, which we call parables, how he told a story to get his point or points across. But before Jesus and his stories, there were stories of Abraham and Isaac, David, Jacob, Joshua, Moses, Joseph. I believe this. I think God knows us and knows that telling stories is the easiest way for God to communicate with us. Today's text, commentators say, is one of the most important stories in all of history. Well, what's the situation here? Deuteronomy is Moses' final address to the people of Israel. Do you remember this story? They have been walking and walking and waiting and waiting to reach the promised land. Now, Moses, Moses would not make it to, into the promised land. He made it very close, but he would not make it. And yet, through these words to his people, Moses tells the story of their future home. A future home, the promised land, a land of milk and honey. And he says, when you come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you possess it and settle in it, what do you do? You take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from the land which the Lord your God is giving you, 
and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. What is the first thing they're supposed to do? Make an offering of thanksgiving to God. First thing. Now, I can sense some of you tensing up just a tad. Yes, I'm talking about an offering. This is not, however, October, November's money sermon. So you can relax. But I want you to think about this. How do you see what we call the offering of gifts? Do you give when the offering plate goes by and see it as a means of the church paying its bills? You know, I hope you don't think that. We do have electronic banking, by the way, for giving offerings. And I was talking to a colleague of mine about a month ago, and he was just daydreaming. He said, Gary, what if every single member of the church, everyone, gave electronically, weekly, to the church? And he said, we wouldn't need the offering plates anymore. And then I thought, hmm, may have some merit to it. But you know what? If that were the case, if all of you here and those of you watching online were giving electronically to the church, and some of you do, and I, I appreciate it, um, the fact is we would still, every time we worship on Sunday morning, not remove the offering plates from worship. A primary reason that we gather for worship is to give you and me the opportunity and privilege of presenting our offerings of thanksgiving to God. If we did not do that, we would be depriving you and me of the opportunity. Now hear me clearly. We do not take a collection, ever. We receive an offering. It's a big difference between taking a collection and receiving an offering. In verse 3, this is what it says. You shall go to who? The priest who is in office at that time. You see, after the offering is taken and while we sing the doxology, two of the ushers come forward and they look to the cross and they hold the, pl the offering plates up. And then they turn around and go back. The reason I asked them to do that little bit of theater is to remind them and me we are not giving to the pastor. We are giving to God. Now, every so often, hopefully not in Presbyterian churches, but every so often in church, someone will have a beef with the pastor or priest, and they will quit giving because they don't like the pastor. Let me tell you, biblically, that is obscene. You do not give an offering to any pastor, any priest. We give our offering to God. Why? To acknowledge what God has done for us. Just like the people in this story. We worship a great God. It makes no difference 
who the pastor or priest is. No difference. You are not here to worship a pastor. You are all here to join me in worshiping the God whom we know as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have a great God who indeed is worthy of our praise. And that, that's a really good story. Let us join together in reciting our public statement of faith as given in the traditional version of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, God and the Father before all worlds. God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us then, for our salvation, came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under the conscious cloud. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory, and both of the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And we believe in one and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
us pray. Mighty God, you saved your people with terrifying displays of power and with signs and wonders. When your people were slaves in Egypt, you rescued them with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. In your never failing faithfulness, you lead your beloved children. You led them then into a land flowing with milk and honey. And we come to you today thankful for your many, many blessings. Receive these offerings as the first fruits of your bounty in our lives. Send our gifts into a world that is hungry to know your refuge and your strength. Amen. It's a privilege for a pastor to invite the congregation to the table, not of the Presbyterians, but the table of our Lord. All who believe Jesus was and is the Messiah are welcome at this table. We will receive the elements by two methods. The first is intinction which is a fancy word for a very simple and elegant process. Intinction means that when you come forward, there will be one, two, three, four stations on the nave. There will be two people at each station. One has a basket with pieces of bread. That person will hand you a piece of bread. Try not to eat it. Step to the next person who has the cup 
Take the piece of bread and dip it gently into the cup and then consume both elements as you make your way back to your seat. Now, if you prefer, we do have the little prepackaged cups which have been sealed. If this is what you would like to have this day, just let the person who's holding the tray know that and they will hand it to you. And when you get back to your seat, you can take the little cellophane off first and then have the wafer and then the second covering and have the juice after that. If you would like, prefer, have to have gluten-free bread, that's fine. All I need you to do wherever you are is make your way to this line right here because the people who are right there will have the gluten-free bread for you if that's your desire. If you find it difficult or impossible to come forward and you would like to receive the elements this day, just wait until the people in the choir loft have been served and the people who serve them will be looking for your upraised hand out here and they will bring the elements to you. Well, this day, I do have quite a few blue cards. These are cards for people asking for prayer. Al Kramer, who is a person with a lot of power, because he can turn me off like that. Al asked for us to pray for his wife, Sherry. Sherry has surgery coming up on Wednesday. That's Sherry Kramer. Ed, Valentine and family, Ed has knee surgery on Tuesday. Ed will be praying for you. Carl, Be Carl Berry, who's also in the sound booth, uh, has prayers of thanks. He had a tooth removed and had an abscess infection resulting in great misery. He thanks for all the prayers. And Carl, we did miss you when you weren't here. The Berry family ask us to remember Mr. and Mrs. Lee Tracy. The Tracys live in Lake Villa, Illinois. They are longtime friends, over 50 years worth of friendship with the Berry family. Um, Mr. Lee Tracy is back in the hospital with an illness, and Mary Ann asks for our prayers. So that's the Tracys in Illinois. Linda Peters asked us to remember, of course, the family and friends of Hazel Wickstrom, who died February 22nd, 2022. Um, Hazel's service will be held Thursday, April 7th, the week before Holy Week. The service will be at 10, determined at two. Uh, I'll meet with Kathy in a couple of weeks to plan the service. Hazel did fill out a pastor information form, which I encourage all of you to do. That gives me an idea of what you would like at your service when the time comes, what scriptures you would like read, what poems you may want, what hymns you may want. Also on that same week, on Tuesday the 5th, we will be having a memorial service for Edna Prince at 11. We want to keep Bob in our prayers in the meantime as well. Now this is from my wife, Cindy. Cindy, is it Elena or Alina? Alina. Cindy came in yesterday afternoon and met a woman who knows a woman named Alina, who is a Russian American who went home to visit her parents and now is unable to return. She is in Moscow. And in her area of Moscow, martial law has been instituted. They are unable to access their money in the banks, and there's very little available in the grocery stores. Alina wants to get her parents out of Moscow, but so far has found no place to go. This 
Russian-American, Alina, ask for your prayers. Nice to end on a positive note. Thursday, March 10th. Jerry, you are a lucky man. It's Kate and Jerry Dean's 66th anniversary. Congratulations. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the nourishment of compassion and grace that we may be generous givers of mercy and love as you have become poor for us, giving us your very life. Help us to be generous to the world that others may live. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other in giving and grace, one in ministry to a world that is in desperate need of your love, particularly in Ukraine, Russia, and the surrounding countries. Let us lift them in prayer. Let us trust that we will be heard and that by your spirit you will be with those people. Through Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forevermore. Hear us now, God, as we pray together as your Son taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us remind ourselves why we gather at this table. I'll re recite the words of institution. On the night of his betrayal and arrest, Jesus gathered his disciples for one last Passover meal together. At that meal, after giving thanks, Jesus took bread and broke it and said to them, This is my body broken for you. Take, eat, and do this remembering me. Scripture tells us that at that same meal, after giving thanks, Jesus took the cup. And he took the cup and held it up for his disciples to see. And he said, this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it, all of you. Later in scripture, Paul reminds us that as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we do show forth the saving death of the Lord until he comes again. All is made ready. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
Thank you, gracious God, for giving us bread for the journey of these 40 days. As we travel on through wilderness, help us to share your grace with others and draw us even closer to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we do pray. Amen.
Two quick things before I get to the charge and the blessing. Some of you have asked, uh, where's Raul? Raul was granted a two-month leave of absence to take care of some personal business in Puerto Rico. All I can say is that it was personal, and all I can do is ask you to pray for Raul until he joins us again. Now, in 1994, I did one of my parish internships before my senior year in seminary. I served for the whole summer as an intern at Little Chapel on the Boardwalk Presbyterian Church in Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina. Somebody had to do it. <laughs> it never occurred to me that in 1994, working with the Little Chapel's director of music, Tom Solly, that I would ever get to work with Tom Solly again. And yet we are. Tom has agreed and signed a contract to be with us as interim director of music through Easter. Tom will be taking care of not just the chancel choir, but also the handbell choir. And I hope you will welcome him and give him encouragement. My charge to you is simple. Go out this week and tell a really good story as you go through the week. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, keep, and preserve you this day and every future day. Amen and amen.